my character animation is currently a single animation and within the animation the girl does put her foot on the ground in order to push the skateboard forward. I'm going to break up the animation into three different animations. There's an animation when she's on the skateboard and she's just riding and there's another animation when she puts her foot on the ground. And there's a third animation where she is idle and she's not moving. I'm using Texture Packer uh, to show the, the workflow where it's fairly easy to uh, change the animation, take out a specific frame or do something with a specific frame. This is one of the advantages of using something like Texture Packer over the individual images. So again, you don't need to use Texture Packer. You could definitely do this uh, with just the code. In this sequence, the cell numbering starts at zero. You can see that in frame zero one, which is the second frame in this animation sequence. The girl's foot moved slightly and felt that the small movement of her foot in that frame zero one was not the effect I was trying to create uh, as the girl was moving over the grass. This effect was actually fairly difficult to notice if you just look at the individual cells because her foot is actually just a little bit above or below the surface of the skateboard but it kind of does make it seem that she's putting a little bit too much like she's taking her foot off the board a little bit it gives this is a matter of personal preference and how you want to create the effects in your game but i wanted to separate out that foot movement or the motion to push the board, moving her foot on the ground, and just the motion where she's just sliding on the ground. Using the animation preview on Texture Packer, I was able to identify which frame was causing the effect that I didn't really like. And then once you identify the frame that you want to eliminate, you can just eliminate it right there from Texture Packer. And then do the publish or the export of the file sheet and you can just reload it into your game. There's another animation sequence for a kickflip. I uh, haven't really dove into that yet. Although this technique would work if you want to change the animation when she jumps as well. So I've exported the file uh, to the assets folder and there's already an existing ride.png. So I'm calling the ride.png sequence the one that she's just on the board and her feet don't leave the surface of the board. So that one's called ride.png and I've just deleted the frame 01, which is the second frame in the sequence. So let's try to reload it and see where we are. This effect is what I wanted to achieve. I, I didn't want her feet to move on the board when she's just writing. I'm gonna create a new project and a new animation sequence for her feet leaving the board and hitting the ground to get the horizontal movement in the left and right directions. The remaining frames are built from cells one through 13. So in the sequence, she's writing the original sequence from Overcrafted, she's riding, she puts her feet on the ground, she takes it off, she puts her feet on the ground, she pushes off, she puts the feet back on the board, and then she starts riding again. The portion of the animation cells that she is, takes her feet off the board, I'm going to break out into a separate animation sequence called Push. 
these are all the cropped animation sequence frames where her feet are just not, they're not planted on the board. When dealing with the sprite animation components in Flame, you can switch the animation sequence. It's a property called animation. So we're going to build up a few different animation sequences. It's called the sprite animation. And then we're going to save it and then flip, change the animation sequence depending on the action, such as tapping the left or the right of the mobile app screen. We now have two sprite animations. One is she's it's called ride and the other one is called push. Push is the one where she moves her foot off of the board. In my workflow, I just realized that it's a little difficult to see the uh, the sprite when it's in VS Code. So I'm going to change the width of the sprite sheet so that it's a bit wider. This will allow me in the way I have VS Code set up, I have, uh, if we click on that sprite sheet, it appears in the top portion of my VS Code editor. Uh, and so I want it to be a little bit wider just so I can see it. This won't affect the development of the gameplay at all. This is just to make it easier for me to see the individual animation cell frames when I'm in VS Code. So I'll just, you have to uh, copy it back into the assets slash images folder. So I just exported it and then it's a new it's a new tile sheet. The functionality will be exactly the same. So it's looking good and it's a little bit easier to see the individual animation frames in case you want to go back and change it or you know, you've got some idea while you're building the game and it just, you know, it doesn't look like how you want it to. You could maybe identify the animation problem like her hair or something is not quite where you want it to be. So let's create another sprite animation. So remember there's sprite animation and that's going to be a property animation property within the sprite animation component. We just need to set up some type of trigger or a way for the, the sprite to change between the different animations and in this case i'm going to start using the left and right hand sides of the mobile app screen so depending on where you tap it's gonna we'll start the process of changing this animation and it's fairly simple it's just the name of the sprite animation component which is lena dot animation so animation is a property from the sprite animation component and here is where you, you assign it the value of the animation. So this push animation is the variable name that we created, which we assigned to the sprite animation component. Okay, let's start her. Uh, we only have it enabled in one direction. Oh, it's working. Okay, so we have the ability to at least change the animation. We don't have a way to change the animation from the push, which is when her foot's on the ground, back to the ride animation, which is the one that her feet don't move from the surface of the board. Her hair is moving and her body's moving. In order to flip it back to the ride anim, the ride animation, we're going to uh, set a timer. And after 1.2 seconds, 1200 milliseconds, we're going to set this thing back to the right animation. We're going to play the push animation for this time period of 1.2 seconds. After that point, uh, her feet will go back onto the board and she'll just be cruising along and riding. Let's see if it works. Oh, looks like it's working. We also have friction on the grass. 
Yeah, it's looking pretty good. All right, so we need to set up the animation in the opposite direction. We'll copy the animation and drop it down to the other sequence where she's facing to the right. And well, it's basically the same code. Let's test it out and see whether she's going left and right. It's so cool. So she she's on the ground, she pushes off, friction takes place, boom. Really happy that this artist Overcrafted did make this demo of the sprites available. And the Flame team also, they have this great animation engine in there. I'm just going to create a single cell animation uh, to keep the tutorial kind of consistent just with this one technique. Even though there's only one frame in here, I'm still going to make it an animation for idle. So there's, you probably don't need to make it an animation sequence. However, I'm just going to do it. And I'm also just going to use texture packer so that you don't have to get confused with a different technique. It should be pretty easy at this stage. So we now have a third animation, which is she's idle. We're going to kick in the idle when the X velocity hits zero. Let's follow the exact same process where she, you export the tile sheet, you move it into the uh, asset slash images, and we set up the sprite animation variable. We'll call this one idle anim for Lena. So we'll just have these three animations and we will use the mouse and um, friction for when she's zero or the velocity is being zero to change the animations. We'll copy the technique, the code for push anim and we'll just change it to idle anim and we'll change the image of uh, the image sequence file so it's idle.png and then the other json data file is the one that we exported from texture packer and it's kind of overkill because there's only one frame in here uh, there's no sequence but well just to keep the technique uh, the workflow right now the same we'll just use exactly the same code because it's pretty easy at this point. The main difference is that the trigger for the change in animation is going to be a change in velocity. So whenever the velocity hits zero, we're going to set the X, uh, the, the property of the animation to this idle animation. Because she's not moving in a um, left to right axis. Okay, let's give it a shot here. Uh, let's make the animation. So the animation is the property from the sprite animation component. So that word animation, it's built into the sprite animation component. Okay, she drops down. Looking pretty good. She stops, perfect. Hope you're having a great time helping other people to learn too. This is such a fun way to learn some of the basics of programming and animation, which I think could help with all types of different programming challenges. Have a great day and keep having fun. Subscribe to the channel for updates on the more than 50 videos I've made on Flame. The videos with source code are also available for free on Teachable, 100% free course. This is a hobby. In whatever way you choose to learn, make sure you have fun and unleash your creativity. Have a fantastic day.